definitely have, has a lot to offer to to the audience, especially in the form of an outlet for for aggressions and, and everything that all of us carry inside. Um, I mean, there's nothing that really gets you going more when you're feeling pissed off than to put on a, a good piece of death metal and just bang your head off or something like like scream your head off, you know. And I mean, death metal is, is so much emotions and everything, dealing with everything from hate to aggression to pain, uh, which none of the mainstream music could ever come near to, in my opinion. Technical ability versus commercial sales are two different things. Absolutely. If you uh, consider, for instance, Nirvana. Yeah. What I mean, how many records have they sold, and how good of a musicians is the band? And they're it's basic musicianship. You can play that, you know, stuff in six months. What is the Crisian idea of lead guitar in death metal? Man, it's uh, it's hard to explain because a uh, lead guitar is just like a natural driven motivation. Like you just start jamming, and that flows naturally, you know. Like, uh, but I don't know, like the what that represents for everyone you know because i know like we never make like a, a music happen just because there's a guy shredding or whatever it's more like the whole stuff and how it fits together you know so sometimes the music is really fast and demands some breaks some different stuff going there so i guess the leads can sometimes you know like uh, add something in the music so we did a lot nowadays we kind of we changed it a little bit like the, the, the leads nowadays are more into the music than in the past there was more like you know just going crazy all the time and nowadays like we realize we have to work better like into the music put the lead into the music not the music into the lead you know? Standard or Western music theory ever play a part in Crisian, or uh, more importantly, does anything from your Brazilian heritage enter Crisian musically? There is, there is a, a rhythms that we learn only in Brazil, like Sepultura Shoulder for the World. 
but uh, yeah, I think there's. I try to learn music from all the cultures, from from like Asian, Arabian, from uh, jazz, blues, country, or don't matter, man. I go really further into the music. I don't care if subdivisions are or if I think something is interesting. I go there, try to learn a different like uh, tempo, different like kinds of mathematics of the music, something that you're not used to do. So yeah, I try. I'm really open. So I guess the whole world, even Brazilian music, have a part in our music. Most musicians, they don't want to play the slow music because they like to show off their talent. But playing slow, does that also show off talent? Yeah, it's quite difficult actually, playing slow. Well, I lack talent, that's my excuse. <laughs> I lack talent. <laughs> there you go. Mm. You know, the first album that you were on, <clears throat> The music was more straightforward, and now you came back after Mayhem started doing crazy stuff with the music. Mm -hmm. How did that uh, affect you? Did you have some trouble with it at first? No, I think uh, Mayhem is actually uh, it's a very interesting aspect of the band that uh, it's in my eyes it evolved. So after the first demo of Death Crush came the Mysterious album, which was a really big step, I think, into black metal directions. Then the Wolf Layers Abyss. It's like a beautiful black metal piece, like complete, completing the, the Mysterious album. And then comes more steps forward with the Grand Declaration 4 album, which is like technical and very clinical, and in the in other hand, I think it was very ahead of its time and very futuristic with a lot of experimental elements. And myself, I am a big fan of experimental music too, so I always thought that that was cool. And then Chimera was like, like, use your word, a bit more straightforward album, but then it was still a step forward in my eyes. I really like the production and the songs and this flow in the music. And when it came Ordo, you know, we composed that album with Bless Himmer and uh, we just agreed on the first basic lines, like it has to be, uh, we found the title for the album and it has to be dealing with chaos and order. And uh, about also main lines like alienation and, and, uh, stuff like that you know to uh, lay down the lines and then he started to compose the music myself the lyrics which was going on on many levels so I can tell it's also the lyrics are in my eyes for me they are very complex so I try to take care of each word that I used and uh, all in all I think the album turned out good and uh, it just uh, very futuristic in a way. It's it's a combination of the past and the future, and uh, I like that. It's crazy, of course. So it's it's dealing with craziness, which means, but you know, sometimes people say is that uh, it's it's a very thin line between genius and crazy people. So we were trying to walk that line, you know. <laughs> when the rest of Europe seemed to follow the black metal flavor, yes. that Greece still had very strong death metal uh, love. Yeah, but also, you know, in black metal, there was also some bands that they started this kind of style, like, uh, for example, Necromantia, that I'm also playing. Uh, Rotten Christ, one of the first bands, Varathron. These bands, they started, you know, they were from the first bands that started playing black metal. And they also had, you know, good... Um, they were in touch and started also having, you know, contacts with bands in, from Norway like uh, Mayhem, like uh, Impel Nazarin from Finland, and other bands that they started, you know, the black metal scene and death metal. But even the black metal bands in Greece played older styles of music. Yes. But uh, other countries, they copied the Norwegian black metal. Of course. But Greece never copied it Norway. Uh, somehow Greece um, <coughs> had this, um, let's say, 
this kind of style that they could combine their own way of um, <coughs> of playing the, their, their music, their black metal, uh, their approach in black metal. So, for example, Rotting Christ, if you hear them, they're not the black metal that it's fast all the time and, you know, trying to copy, like you said, the Nor Norwegians band, Norwegian bands. And they have their own style, their own, uh, you know, identity. Also, the vocals of Psychis, there, you know, you can just tell when you first hear the first note, even. And also, I can say the same thing for Septic Flesh. They have their own style, their own way and their own... Uh, you know their own kind of melodies, putting the um, there's let's say uh, you know uh, that they're really melodic, combining with uh, with a combination of really aggressive music. Mm -hmm. 